again, it's a military principle, right? How are you going to ask someone to charge a hill if they don't believe you're going to charge it with them and that you're concerned about them? March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the rain. Welcome to Timelines, episode 271. Today is my pleasure to have my classmate, Congressman John Chimpkus, on Timelines. We're going to look at his time at West Point, how he transitioned in 1980 to the regular army, then served over in Europe, then after Europe came into Fort Ord the 7th, transitioned back into civilian life, went to his home, worked in the public sector, and then ran for Congress, not just once, but twice. And then in 1996, he won one of the closest elections of that year by 1,200 votes, and ever since has been the congressman from Illinois, Congressman John Shepkus. So now with further ado, let's get right into this episode on Timelines, episode 271. John, welcome to Reno <laughs> a second time. We always, it seems like it always happens. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, glad to be here. So John is my classmate, as a lot of you know, and he went to West Point, as did I. And the first thing I'm going to ask you is what made you go or decide to even go to West Point, go to the military? Well, I, I got... Uh, the draw was to uh, the academy at West Point because of uh, selfless service, uh, the com- commitment, the history, uh, the great leaders who had gone through from Eisenhower to Grant and Lee and uh, Patton, the, the ones that we probably read about in our history books, uh, and the uh, the lore of uh, the honor code and uh, duty on our country was very appealing. So when did you decide you wanted to go to West Point? I, I, I had to make a decision my sophomore year in high school to That's take a class, one a class or the other, and one was going to take me in one direction, the other one was to prepare me in the math and sciences to, because, as you know, when we were there, it was still just an engineering school. True, which I'm <laughs> so really happy because it's exactly what I wanted to do and yeah. what I did later on, too. Yeah. Well, I was happy because I, I struggled quite a bit, so I probably could have done other things. But um, but I am a, I do have a degree in engineering. Yep, that's very good. And my, I was not a seller student, but you know, yeah. my goal was to graduate right. and not go to summer school right. and just pass that's everything. Right. That's right. So we also went to ranger school at the same time. So when you got yeah. out of the academy, you went yeah. through the academy. Is there anything while you're at the academy that really stands out that you remember? Well, I, I did a lot of things. I was very involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, uh-huh. the last especially the last couple of years, and that was helpful. I taught uh, Bible class at the Cadet Chapel. Of course, I did a lot of stuff with the, the Lutheran Chapel. I, I I tried to do a lot of different things. Uh, I'm, I'm from uh, middle America, I'm, uh, lower to middle income family, seven kids. Wow. Uh, seven, so, seven brothers and yeah, sisters. So wow. the academy was the first time I really got to really experience a wide range, whether it's go down to see a Broadway play or – you know, go visit Statue of Liberty, or I, I made two jumps with the Sports Parachute Club. I bowled. I ran in the Jersey Shore Marathon. I just did a lot of things that I never would have had a chance to. You know, it's so true. If any kid who gets to go to Academy, and if you work hard, you can make it there. That's right. You can do so much. That's right. I mean, it's such an experience. It's an right. amazing yeah. experience. That's that's good. It fills your and I even passed. <laughs> so that was well, you know, amazing. My whole goal was just to graduate, <laughs> but I really and actually. There were a lot of tough times. Yeah, a lot of tough times. But I really look back, and I really feel privileged to right. go there. And the people I met and the friends that you have right. for a lifetime. You bet. So next time you're here, we're going to get your classmates together. Yeah, that'd be great. We're going to go yeah. take a hike. Yeah, we we'll take up a, a hike. Hill. We'll down, <laughs> I don't know if I can make it. <laughs> up to the Rim Trail. It's a nice little Rim Trail okay. hike. You can see Lake Tahoe. Yeah, that would be great. It's beautifully crested and then come back down. It makes yeah. you feel good. Yeah. So going on, um, in the military, you went in the infantry, went to Ranger I School. Did. Same I time did. I did. You yeah. went to Germany, I know that. I did. Go Believe it or not, I was supposed to go to Germany, I think, where did you go? What unit was it? I was 1st Armored Division, 3rd Brigade, okay. uh, 1st and 54th Infantry Battalion. Uh, it was great. Is that a regular great line tour. infantry unit? Regular line infantry. That's yeah. good. I was supposed yeah. to go in... Um, I was supposed to go and be in an infantry yeah, unit that yeah. uh, basically protected the nukes. Oh, yeah. No, we were mechanized, and we had a defensive position on the border. It was very yeah. transformational for me because we, I also got, had a chance to go into East Berlin, mm-hmm. and you had wow. to wear a uniform, so you were an ally because we did a week of, of urbanized training there, and 
so a lot of work I do now uh, with democracy and freedom in Eastern Europe really stems from my time in Germany because I toured all over. Uh, I got, again, I saw the, the fences. I saw the guard dogs. I, I knew that the, that the folks in the East were deprived of freedom and to see what those countries have done now and uh, and how they've advanced and grown and are great allies of the United States. It's amazing how much has changed in our lifetime. Oh. I was in tents. By the way, I couldn't uh, go to Berlin. Right, being in right. tents, being in jump stash, yeah. they had strange rules that go way back to World War right, II. Right, yeah. yeah. It's only like so many military people can go in. Not yeah, so I was very fortunate. A uh, classmate of ours, Brett yeah. Dalton, was there. Oh, and Brett, I was, yeah, I know I was, Brett well. He was with the brigade, and we got a chance to visit. Uh, and I... that. Again, a lot of fond memories. Brett is the uh, last time I he was we were passing in Afghanistan. Uh, <laughs> no surprise. He's our class president, isn't he? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Brett's our class president. Yeah. That's good. So now you decided to get out. What made you get out of the military? And you were in well, how many years? I, I, well, I active of uh, five and a half. I I I think when you're in uh, on the border, I and I came back to Conus. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me to transition from alert status ready to go ammunition at the ready and then come back and then oh yeah i can be put to into uh you know advanced course platoons uh <laughs> personal inspections and you know treat treating you a, a different way so but then i was fortunate to go out to the seventh infantry division light nice and they were transitioning to the light division and I was on the general staff there in, in the individual training section. But there was an urge for me to go back and uh, become a teacher. Uh, so I, they got, I got an assignment to be the assistant S3 of a battalion. And I go, man, assistant S3, <laughs> I'll never get a command. So I said, now nah, it's time to leave. So I, I left to be, uh, get my teaching certificate. You know, that reminds me, I got out, I was in 160, I went to flight school late in 160th, and they were downsizing too, which you don't want to be in a military when they're downsizing. Right, right. And I remember, I was having a great, not a great time, but a rough time at times, but it's, military can be tough too, it can but be it was tough. rewarding. But they wanted to make me a supply officer. That's now right. I remember That's another right. reason why. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that reminded me. You just reminded me yeah. of that. So getting out, you're out. Um, what's your, and now you transition into politics eventually. Yeah, so I, I was in California. So I got my California right. teaching certificate. But a Christian school near my hometown uh, in Collinsville had an opening. So they, I, I believe I'm a Christian. And so I believe God directed me back home. Uh, and... Back home, um, I was teaching. I was teaching government history. Of course, you come out of local government, and I was sending my students out mm -hmm. to a lot of these meetings right night. So you can go to the city council meetings, you can right. go to the township meetings, you can go to the county meetings, and they were coming back with some interesting stories about folks maybe not as involved or it's one party rule to all the office holders Illinois. Were in, in yeah. Illinois and Saint, it's down, St. Louis right? yeah, downstate and so I uh, from their comments I thought well maybe one party rule isn't very good I didn't really had a, a great a party identification except for I'm pro-life Ronald Reagan, strong defense. Right, we came and, up under Reagan, and it was wonderful to have him yeah. as our commander in chief. And then, then I ascribed to the um, you know economic principles of um, uh, raising capital, assuming risk, return on that investment, raising people's uh, income across the board. So, uh, so then I decided to run, and I, I you know ran for county board and lost. Ran for a township office, nonpartisan, got elected, then then decided to try to make it a, a full-time gig. And there was a, a seat up uh, called a county treasures, which is that uh, we collect the property taxes and we invest the, the county's portion of the portfolio. And the my opponent was uh, a 12-year incumbent, but wasn't very active wow. in the office. And uh, I, a lot of Democrats voted for me. And put me into office. Was that a partisan or nonpartisan? It was position? a partisan. Position. Really, back yeah. then it was partisan. It's oh, like yeah. our county level. A lot of those. Right. It can be partisan or nonpartisan, depending on California. It's mostly right. nonpartisan. Yeah. Here in Nevada, it's partisan. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I did read where you were one of the first Republicans elected, and it was a Demo was a Democrat county. Yeah, it's very that's strong. Pretty, that's good. But it's, you that's know, good. fast forward thirty five years, it's now a fifty fifty county. But really? uh, it's very competitive yeah. now. But. But it's taking a lot longer than I ever would have thought. Now, the whole, it, we've seen a lot of change in our lifetime. We have. We're getting old now, right? It's we been are a long getting time old. since That's we right. graduated. Yes. 
So going on, you ran and you, you got elected to Congress. I ran in 92 for Congress and lost as really the challenger versus the incumbent. Uh, 94, I ran for re-election as treasurer. And then 96, the incumbent ran for the Senate and the seat was open and I won a five-way primary. And then I won one of the closest races in the nation. I won by 1,200 votes uh, against a, a, you know, a pretty good uh, state rep who was a conservative Democrat. And, um, but I won. And so I've been there ever since. You know, I remember now we talked on the phone because I just called you and you were running. I didn't, it comes back. You forget about stuff, folks, when you get older. But we <laughs> talked on the phone. And right. then I think I saw you in Washington once or twice when I yeah. came in and out of Washington. Yeah. It's been, been interesting. I like to welcome all any, any classmate who comes through or – yeah, um, we got we some like good classmates. Welcome, we got a fun class. All the time. Good class. Yeah. And hey, we're going to go to a break, and then we're going to come back and ask you about your life and success principles. Okay, great. Hi, this is Bill on break. It's really great to uh, be talking to John. It's always wonderful to talk to classmates. And a couple thoughts. My daughter's in the process right now of um, going to the academies. My son's a, a graduate of the Coast Guard Academy. One thing about the academy grads, and uh, it's something that we sort of stick together. Through our whole career, we follow each other. We do similar things. We have a lot of commonalities. And uh, if you ever get a chance to go to academy and you're young enough and you're listening to this, take that opportunity. It's a wonderful thing to serve. And you'll get back so much more than it takes. Well, now without further ado, let's get right back into this episode with John. Okay, John, coming back, we're going to talk about your license success principles. Yes, right. So lead by example is the first one you told me. Yeah, that's basically the military, right? Um, if you want your soldiers to be squared away, you have to be squared away. If you, your soldiers got to be able to uh, assemble and uh, clean and M16, you've got to be able to do it. So uh, PT test, you name it. So um, let, people are always going to look at you. And the question is, what are they going to, what are they going to view about you? And so that's why you have to lead by example. You know, you mentioned something, and I think about it all the time. Is what I really like about the military is they made us go through basic called our our plebe summer. Mm -hmm. I'm mean, our first summer there. Beast barracks. Yeah, that's right. And we had to learn to be a soldier right. and learn all the basics. Right. And that's where it started. You because you really learn the basics. Sometime I think out in the world sometimes people jump ahead without learning the basics but the army actually brings you through all those steps well, i yeah i agree I, and i think uh people need to understand that you you have to start at the bottom right uh, and by starting at the bottom we can get to the next point and your family by the way your background right. is you started like you said with your brothers and sisters right. middle middle america middle america and right. just one step at a time but you're still i mean i i know you you're not you're just john you know <laughs> I hope so. you're John, I mean, you're a congressman too, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's just you have a good way about oh, you, and that's thanks. that's the way it should be to go back. Right. And you want to go back and teach? I understand someday. Well, someday. I mean, I go into classrooms quite a bit now. I any level, I read uh, uh, preschool kids, uh, kindergarten. I've I've done middle school, grade school. I've talked to university class. I try to get into classrooms as, as much as I can. That's really good. So, care about those who you serve. That's your second point. Well, if you, uh, you, that's the point. You've got to, you, if you're going to be surrounding yourself with people and you're going to ask them to do things, they really need to know that you're, you're, you care about them. Uh, again, it's a military principle, right? How are you going to ask someone to charge a hill? Right. If, if they don't believe you're going to charge it with them and that you're concerned about them. Um, uh, students, when you're in the classroom, they got to know that you really want what's best for them and you're trying to help them um, dealing with constituents right can't always get it right uh, we don't always deliver but I, they they always say you gave it your best shot I, and, and my my staff they do a tremendous job of answering calls doing follow-up and they that the great letters we get back from my constituents who say thank you for Jenny, thank you for Amy, thank you for Doug, because they kept following up. That's, I think that occurs because they know I care about them, so then they care about the constituents. And it sounds like you've got good people around you, too. I've got great, well, you look at me, you go, how could this guy be there for 21 <laughs> you know, years? You and you know, I made it through the academy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's really good. Now, have a mission, goal, and objectives. Well, I think... 
so again, being mission oriented, but what does that mean? That means where do you want to go? And, and how do you want to get there? And they're all intertwined because by leading by example and by having compassion to your subordinates, you can set a goal and, 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 and reach that and have objectives to the different aspects that you want to get to. So, uh, so you want to win a campaign, right? You've got to, uh, you can pay people, but I'm telling you, people who really believe in what you believe and what you stand for are going to work harder and they're going to be more sincere than someone you're paying to hand out literature. I mean, if they That's really true. believe volunteers, that yeah. volunteers just a lot just of pizza, do, right? A lot of, yeah, you got to feed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Food is amazing. An army thing. runs on his stomach. So, you know, I first learned that lesson <laughs> yeah. in ranger school. Yeah. Remember when we got fed yeah. at the end right. and you all wake up? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Good campaigners. You got to bring them pizza. Yeah, you got to bring them pizza. That's right. <laughs> That's good, John. I appreciate it. Now, I got one really tough question. Okay. St. Louis is your area that you're from originally. Your St. Louis metropolitan area. And, is there a town or an area? Well, so uh, uh, I'm from the Illinois side. Mm-hmm. So I was born and raised in Collinsville, and I still live there. Collinsville. So that's what's your district? Well, I, I represent the 15th district. Okay. So it's uh, Illinois has 102 counties. I represent 33 now, most of my district now is on the eastern side of the state. So I can see St. Louis from my house because I live on the bluffs. Uh-huh. But I represent communities like um, Danville, Illinois, Lawrenceville, uh, El Dorado, Harrisburg, uh, Viana, uh, down to Metropolis. So it's all, the, it's all the eastern side of the state. It's called uh, gerrymandering. and that's Oh, yeah, what, uh, seen, yeah, I can imagine. That's what Especially I in live under. That's right. <laughs> so um, here's a tough question. In your area, if I go there, what type of food should I go to eat? What's your known for? Well, we're, we're corn on the cob, I'm telling oh, you. Wow, when, yeah. <laughs> when it's uh, June or July, we're waiting for the, the road stands to come up. Wow. Um, St. Louis area is known for pork steaks. Uh-huh. Pork steaks uh, and corn on the cob. Kind of pork, but Americana, barbecue. Like. Oh, oh barbecue. Bet, yeah. And so baked beans, and you don't get much better than that. So that's it. So barbecue, baked beans, corn on the cob, like the American, that's uh, right. yeah. American bread basket of the world. <laughs> that's right. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. And take Thanks. care. Enjoy I'm, your short time here. I'm glad you know. we were able to hook up. Yeah, take care. All Thanks. Right. All right.